intriguing megalithic perspective. Hello viewers! One of my previous videos was about the limestone blocks of the Giza pyramids, the limestone enigma. I hope that you viewed it. That video has received a lot of comments stating that the pyramid blocks are not cut from limestone. Instead, they are geopolymers, thus they were not quarried, and that is why there are no tool marks. Oh, okay, that makes sense. Geopolymers poured into forms, or more correctly, geopolymer cements poured into block-shaped forms. That is how the stones were shaped. Yes, that makes sense. The ancient Egyptians were able to mix up their own limestone and let it dry at room temperature, and you and I can't tell the difference from real limestone. In fact, even geologists haven't noticed the difference at all. Same density, same hardness, same tiny little shells and tiny dead creatures, slightly different compositions, geopolymers, poured pyramids. Nice! That answers everything. Except it doesn't. Before I go any further, I just have to say that I don't care one way or the other, natural stone or geopolymers, I believe in what's logical and what is possible. I have created this video to give the several logical reasons that these limestone blocks are not geopolymers. First, and starting with the biggest reason, we all know that the engineers whom built the pyramids were beyond amazing in their planning and intelligence and clearly in their resources and capabilities. The level and alignment and the perfection and the magnitude is stunning, to say the very least. They were tasked to build enormous and perfect structures to last for thousands and thousands of years. If geopolymer cements existed, room temperature, workable stone, the pharaohs and their engineers would have built the pyramids very differently from what we see today. Think about it. I am quite certain that if they had the ability to mix and pour 5 million tons of geopolymer limestone cement, then the Great Pyramid would be a poured 5 million ton geopolymer limestone pyramid, not individual blocks. I can believe in a 20-year bucket brigade, thousands of laborers hauling water up one brigade and powdered cement mixed up the other brigade, then mixing at the top. Yes, but the result would have been a single, massive, solid limestone pyramid that could not be simply disassembled. But that is not what we have now, is it? Secondly, geologists are highly qualified individuals whom have spent their lives studying the igneous, metamorphic, and sedimentary rocks that cover our almost unfathomably old planet. The thought of two geologists arguing over if any sedimentary rock is in fact a sedimentary rock or a catalyst cemented geopolymer is a huge slap in the face to geologists and their universities all around the world. Literally hundreds of thousands of geologists have studied the rock types, both igneous and sedimentary, around the Giza Plateau. If 99.9% .9 of them are willing to sign their career reputations on the claim that the pyramid casing stones and filler blocks are real and regional limestones, then I'm going to ignore the remaining 0.1% as they are just creating fake news for profit. Third, if the blocks could be poured, then why are they all so different? Why would they make a different size mold for each block? Fourth, do you know how difficult it would be to crush 5 million tons of limestone into dust? Limestone is not talc. It's not granite. But it still takes a lot of effort to pulverize it into dust. Today, we have huge machines that work 24 and 7 to crush limestone into usable ingredients for cement. Then it has to be mixed together again with silica and the perfect ingredients as per your geopolymer instructions, and that would also take a lot of elbow grease. Oh, and geopolymers might be better in terms of CO2 emissions, but it's far more dangerous to you, and a much more delicate and precise balance of ingredients. Fifth, we as a species don't just forget how to make things better. 
We will never forget how to make electricity, nor how to make stainless steel, or how to grow rice. These and hundreds of thousands of other technological advancements have improved our lives and will never be forgotten. Cement was heavily advanced by the Romans and the Chinese, and then even further advanced with Portland cement in the 1700s. Should I go on? Sixth, you can buy Portland cement at your local home improvement store, or even on Amazon, but try to buy a 40 pound bag of geopolymer. A premixed polymer additive, quick dry cement is not a geopolymer. Go shopping for geopolymer. And what you'll get is an education on mixing your own or buying a book to mix your own. It's a scam. It's a hoax. If you can't buy it at Home Depot, Lowe's, your local Ace Hardware, or on Amazon, then it is too dangerous to do at home, or it doesn't exist, or both. Look, I get it. We need to be able to figure out how this was done, but geopolymers are not the logical solution. And I'm not ready to say it was huge giants or aliens or magic. No, we had our hands in this somehow, blood, sweat, and tears. So what do I think is a logical explanation? Okay, I believe there are two parts to this. One, these limestone blocks were cobbled, cleaved by mass and impact. We have to think big. Clearly, the ancient Egyptians could think big. Now it's our turn. And two, there is something different about silica and silica carbonates. It's a science that we are about to solve. The pyramid limestones and granite puzzle will be figured out with further research on atomic relationships with silica, how it can be shaped, broken, and even disconnected from other valences and masses to make it weightless. The secret is in the math and the science. I hope that you enjoyed this video. Please tap that subscribe button to support my work, and I look forward to your comments. Thank you.